Falling sailboat propellers are the topic of this week's Boat Tech TV. This week's show we're talking about folding sailboat propellers. Now full disclaimer before we start, I am actually the US rep for Brunton's propellers and we do sell sailboat propellers. Um, but what we're going to do in the show is just put them across in more of a generic format, no brand names, nothing like that. So it's more about the science behind them rather than selling a product. So let's get started. Now the main components of a folding sailboat propeller are a little bit different to that of a fixed pitch. Um, fixed pitch everyone knows um, with its strengths and its weaknesses and the idea behind a sailboat propeller is that when you're sailing the uh, propeller is actually a drag and it's uh, slowing you down. So it's, uh, it's an effort by engineers as we always do to try and solve these problems and to make the boat go faster. And the, the general premise is that the, the blades um, just pivot about a point and when you're sailing uh, they fold out the way. Now the components of a folding sailboat propeller are pretty common across most of the manufacturers. There is going to be people offering different whistles and bells to do this and features to do that, but in general you can kind of whittle it down to some pretty standard features. Um, basically you're going to have um, a blade section, it's going to have some teeth or some gear system to keep the blades together. Um, you're going to have a pin uh, that's going to be sitting between the hub and the blade and the blade is going to uh, pivot around that. And bear in mind that the blades open usually with um, hydrodynamic um, or centrifugal force, a combination of the both actually. Um, so there is there is some interesting engineering going on there. Um, they always have um, a zinc, that you can see on this one here, it's actually embedded. This is for a sail drive system. Um, this is a, a shaft vessel, a small one, a 12 inch. So this one wouldn't actually have one on. Uh, you'd rely on a shaft zinc uh, to, to, to protect this one from cathodic action. And then you can see on the on the image there, in the centre, uh, buried inside it there, there's um, uh, what we call a bullet zinc that, that sits there. Um, when the blades are thrown open, there is quite some uh, some large forces involved. So if you imagine the blade is is if it's hitting the hub, it's it's gonna it's gonna come to a stop, uh, and to cushion the stops, we have inside what we call buffer pads, and it's on each one of these here. Uh, you can just see them in there, and they just sit just behind the blade, and it rests on a what we call the blade palm here. So when the blades are thrown open by the action of the water, uh, they come to a little stop. Um, some manufacturers make them out of rubber, some are going to be hard plastic, but in general they do the same purpose and it's just to stop the loads on the blade um, and stopping the blade from cracking and all those um, things that we want to avoid. Now if we look at the diagram again, you can see that the geared system and the geared blade is quite an important and embedded part of the propeller, um, but it wasn't always this way. Um, folding propellers originally started with propellers like the Martek um, elliptical propeller and it was just relied on the lift generated by the blades and the centrifugal force um, from, from the actual material in the blades to throw them open. Um, now this worked fine initially um, but if you were racing you can see there the bottom image um, if you um, stop the shaft and the blades um, were up and down as they, as they open the bottom blade hangs down and if you're racing, that's drag. Um, so what you had to do in the olden days was either mark your shaft and make sure that you stopped the propeller so that the blades couldn't um, drop down. Um, or as a lot of people did, these thick elastic bands and dive down the boat before a race and just um, put an elastic band around the propeller so when they were racing, it kept them all together and it didn't create drag. This is a <laughs> true story, is this? Um, so really, the idea behind the sailboat propeller, it's, it's, a, it's a very simple and elegant um, design. Really the blades fall a bit back and you can see there, this is a, a catamaran that we did. Uh, this is the four blade, you can kind of see the limitations there when the blades are trying to fall back like a flower petal, that they're starting to touch. Now these do, don't touch in service, there's always a little gap there. Um, but you can see how the intricacies of how they have to fold and keep together. The other real advantage of using the uh, folding propeller is unlike a feathering propeller that is designed to sit in the floor and feather when you're sailing and effectively disappear and the whole design behind it is to reduce its drag when it's sitting in the floor. The folding propeller, because it folds back, it can keep a lot of the characteristics 
of a fixed pitch propeller. So where a feathering propeller, if this was the flow, you can see that the all the blades, you've got the twist of the blades, uh, pitch reduction, and all these nice features that we expect on a falling propeller, you wouldn't have them on a feathering propeller. Um, so we can start to adopt, you know, pitch reduction where the high pitch at the root and a low pitch at the tip, which helps with reducing the noise, reducing the vibration, you get better performance, it helps with the, with reverse and all these kind of things. So we carry over a lot of the favorable things um, from a, a fixed pitch propeller. And that's one of the real selling points of um, these guys. Now, the one area that the, the falling propellers do start to suffer in reverse is as you get smaller. So for the really small jobs, you've got to be really careful to size the propeller because the blade sections, the pitch and the engine can all work against you. So it's a question of navigating through that field um, and getting it right. Now then, just talking about the drag there, um, to put it into some numbers, um, these are some tests that were done for a three blade um, propeller and the both in fixed pitch and in folding, a comparable size and a comparable blade area ratio. Um, you can see that at, at a typical hull speed or six to seven knots, you're looking for the um, three blade fix, you're looking at about 40 pounds worth of drag. And then once you take it to um, a three blade folding with all the blades folded up, uh, that drag drops down to um, about two to three pounds worth of drag. So if you're sailing, again, that's, that's that knot and you're sailing past your buddies, um, if you're cruising, you get an extra couple of days in port because you're just going to be making such good wear. So it is really, really quite significant, the effect that these um, have. Now, the styles of them, again, this is different from every manufacturer. Um, the main parameters here is obviously the blades I've just listed them by. But there is other things like people have different gears. You can get the blades to flip over and, and do all sorts of things. So, um, But in general, um, two blade design is typically for the smaller boats. Um, it's it's a uh, probably the most efficient design. You have got um, uh, less blades. It, it helps with the efficiency, but the reduction of that is that you're going to get um, blades passage effects. So as it's going past top dead center, the blades at the bottom. There's no other blade out helping with the shock load. So you're going to get thump 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 as it goes round. So there is um, uh, in terms of noise and vibration, it's probably towards the noisy spectrum compared to a three or four blade, but in terms of performance, it's better. So it's the engineering whack-a-mole seesaw thing of balancing everything out. Um, it also, as you can see from this one, um, once it's once it's folded, um, it has it goes to like a clamshell. Um, most designs will be like this, and it just means that the drag disappears to nothing. So for the race boats and the race propellers, they're typically two blades, depending on um, how big the manufacturer goes. But the idea is it becomes like a clamshell and disappears. So that's typically the two blade. Um, the three blade is probably the most common that we see. Um, standard 30, 40 foot boat. It's great all round performance. And uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very popular design. It's easy to fit, easy to service, and they last a long time. Um, four blades starting to get to about 50 foot sailboats. That's that kind of size. Um, they do still have large drag, um, but these now start to get very interesting because, as you can imagine, with this little buffer pad here and this long arm here, the centrifugal force as it throws open, as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, all these forces get bigger as well. And not only that, is with the sailboats, uh, a lot of the manufacturers that are on the market. Um, are not really um, propeller manufacturers. They, um, I say propeller manufacturers, um, they just manufacture one product and that's what they do and they do it very, very well. Um, once you get to uh, somebody coming in with a, a random one-off boat um, or putting larger engines than the boat needs or all these design challenges that engineers are faced with, you start to get into problems with um, blade loading, cavitation, pressure pulses, all these these things. Um, so really, with a, with a four blade propeller, it can be as you start to get up there, um, you can get um, pretty hairy with certain designs if you don't get it right. Um, you have to really treat it. It's not. It's although it is a sailboat, and people just think it's an off the shelf thing. Um, the design of the propeller is is very very advanced, and you've got to really keep an eye on these these elements here. Now the limits, again, we just talked about the uh, the blade area is, is one of them. So as you start to put more power on the blade, not typically a problem for a sailboat as they're an auxiliary system, but as you load the blades more, because they're 
ch thick chunky sections because they've got to take the load of the um, of the root so they get to be quite thick and chunky here um, you start to get cavitation so the blade area is normally what you would increase to offset the cavitation um, again you can't quite do this with some of the designs so there is limits as to how much power you can put in them and the size and, the, and that sort of area is there um, the reverse is um, is, is, is one of the limits that is always talked about. Um, if it's managed very well um, with the designs and you've got the expectations and understand the boat, it's never an issue. Um, and then really the other thing to, to realize, what most people don't realize, is that the, the falling propellers, they all have teeth. And the teeth mesh together and when they mesh together, they're starting to wear. So you'll have some propellers that will last 20, 30, 40 years if they're looked after. Um, falling propellers, because the teeth are wearing all the time, you're probably going to get about um, 10 to 12 seasons, um, certainly from our design. Um, and then the teeth need to be looked at or, or fresh blades or something. Um, so it is it is a wearing part, and that's why it's so important to keep it maintained every year, keep the buffer pads in, and just keep it well looked after. And it should, it should give you um, a good run for your money. But anyway, not to end on the... Um, on the, on the uh, what it can't do, let's let's say what it can do. Um, it, it the biggest reason for choosing a feathering propeller is to gain back the speed. Um, you're going to get about a knot under sail. Um, if you're cruising on board, uh, the liverboard quality is is better because um, you can stop the shaft, stop the engine, and nothing rotates and everything's streamlined. So the, um, the, the if the propeller's left to free wheel, if it was a fixed pitch. You don't get the swirling, swooshing noise of the water and bubbles, so you don't get any vibrations from standing on the helm above the propeller. So it makes it a lot um, quieter. It's also, um, because you're stopping the shaft, um, you, you're not wearing your cutlass bearing, your shield, seals, your shafts, all these kinds of things. So there is um, a, not just the, the actual speed and the time that you save, um, there is other, other things on the mechanical side of the boat that is an, is, is an advantage as well. Um, and that's really about it. So these are the sailboat propellers. Um, uh, here at King, I'm, I'm very passionate about these. These were the, one of the first products I was um, selling, and um, I just I I just adore them. I love them very much. So I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you. Um, if you like this video, um, we as you can see, we do a little bit of um, what we do in the office, but we're also um, pushing out naval architecture next week will be a naval architecture episode so we kind of keep it um, a little bit random but if you do like the video um, if you're on youtube there's a little subscribe button if you're on facebook give us a like um, and then next week we will see you for a different topic i think next week we're going to look at whole speed talking about food number and displacement length ratio and all those good fun terms that uh, people use thanks for watching and see you next time